Hi kids, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing good and staying healthy, being good for your parents. I got a new book today and I'm super excited to read it to you. Let me pull my table closer. I got a few new books today, I got three. I actually went to the library and then I forgot it was President's Day. <laughs> so tomorrow I'll go to the library, but I went to Five Below and I found these cool books, um, the Titanic, Lost and Found. So today this is what we're reading. We're reading about the Titanic. Then I got the great Houdini. So one day we're going to be learning about the magician Houdini, which is one of my favorites. And then I got for the girls, I love pink. <laughs> this is the same book as my ballerina book that I really like. So look forward to these two <laughs> in the future. But today we're going to learn about the Titanic, Lost and Found. Ready? If you need to pause it to get a drink or a snack or a blankie, now's a good time. If not, we'll get right into it. The Titanic, lost and found. This is level four, which is second or third grade, but you can listen in if you're in a lower grade. Chapter one, The Wonder Ship. It is April 10th, 1912. The whole world is talking about an amazing new ship. Its name is the Titanic. The ship is getting ready to leave on its first trip across the ocean. It is going all the way from England to America. There it is, the Titanic. Burp, burp. Hear the horns coming into port. That was a long journey from back then. Newspapers call the Titanic the Wonder Ship. They, they say it is like a floating palace. The Titanic has restaurants, a post office, even a gym with a toy camel to ride. <laughs> this picture shows the ship as if it, it were sliced open. The fancy rooms are on the top decks. On the lowest deck, you can see the squash court and the swimming pool. So it's like they broke the ship open. Do you see all the levels and all the stuff on it? I can flatten it out for you. <laughs> There's the swimming pool. And then up here at the top are all the really rich, like, sweet rooms. And then down on the bottom is the poor people section. Can you see it then? I hope so. Pretty cool, right? Lots of pictures. Pause it. Pause it if you need to and look, look at all the pictures. <laughs> the Titanic is the biggest ship the world has ever seen. Not today, the cruise ships are bigger, but back then, yes. <laughs> the ship is almost four city blocks long, and it is as tall as an 11-story building. Best of all, experts say the Titanic is the, safe, the safest ship ever. They say it cannot sink. Why? The ship doesn't have one bottom. It has two. One is inside the other. The lowest part of the Titanic is divided into 16 watertight compartments. If one compartment starts to flood, the captain can just pull a switch. A thick steel door will shut. The water will be trapped. It cannot flood the rest of the ship. Two or three or even four compartments can be full of water. Still, the Titanic will float. So, it's like four blocks in a city in one boat. Pretty big boat. It'll take you a while to explore it. <laughs> the Titanic has another nickname, the Rich Man Special. Some of the richest people in the world are sailing on the Titanic. Their tickets cost more money than a sailor earns in a lifetime. Not all passengers are rich. Some have very little money. They are not traveling for fun. They are going off to find a new home in America. So you had both the rich and the poor on this boat. The rich paid a lot of money because they had those really fancy rooms. <laughs> Keep it in mind. At last, the big moment comes. The Titanic is ready to sail. Crowds line the shore. Flags wave. A band is playing. Passengers come out on the decks. They wave goodbye to their friends. The engines roar. Slowly the ship streams out of the harbor. The Titanic has begun its first voyage. 
No one guesses. This will also be its last. So that's the first and the only time they see the Titanic leaving the port. They never make it to America. Well, look at all the band playing. Everybody's excited. It was a big moment. It took a long time to load all those people on, too. Chapter 2, Iceberg. <laughs> it is April 4th, 1912. The Titanic is an is in icy waters off the coast of Canada. It is almost midnight. The ship is quiet. The sea is smooth as glass. The air is biting cold. The passengers have had a good dinner. Some of them are still up playing cards. Most are asleep in their rooms. It is a good night to be inside, but the lookout must watch for danger. He is high above the ship in the crow's nest. He stares into the darkness. Suddenly, the lookout sees a dark shape. It is a mountain of ice, and the Titanic is heading right into it. The lookout rings an alarm. He calls, Iceberg, straight ahead. <laughs> oh no, see it? It's just the tip, but under the water, it's gigantic. That's an iceberg. It's like a mountain under the water. A seaman is below, steering the ship. He tries to turn the ship away, but it is too late. The giant iceberg scrapes along the side of the ship. There is a bump, a grinding noise. It doesn't seem like much. Some people don't even notice. But the captain hurries from his room. He goes down below. He wants to see if the ship is hurt. Soon he learns the terrible truth. The iceberg has hurt the ship Badly. Water is pouring in. Five of the watertight compartments are already flooded, and that is too many. Nothing can be done now. It seems impossible, but it is true. The Titanic is going to sink. Oh no, it ripped. See that big iceberg? It ripped the side of the ship open, and they're, they're realizing that the unsinkable ship is in fact sinking in icy waters. The captain gives his orders. Wake the passengers, radio for help, and make the lifeboats ready. The captain is afraid. He knows that 2,227 people are on board, and there are only enough lifeboats for 1,100 of them. So that's 1,127 people that don't have anywhere to go and the boat is sinking. So on. Uh, the passengers do not know this. As people come out on deck, they laugh and joke. Some are even in evening gowns. Others wear life jackets over pajamas, but they are not worried. They still think they are on a ship that cannot sink. So they're not telling the passengers because they don't want people to panic because there's not enough lifeboats. Because of this, now every ship has to have enough lifeboats for everybody. So this will never happen again. You don't have to worry. Get in the lifeboats, the sailors tell them. Women and children go first. Men go only if there is room. Many do not want to get in. The big ship seems so safe. The little lifeboats do not. The sailors are in a hurry. They know there is trouble. They rush people into the lifeboats. Some are only half full, but the sailors lower them anyway. Many passengers are far from the lifeboats. They are the poor ones. The rooms are down below. They know there is trouble too, but they do not know where to go. A few try to find their way. They go upstairs and down halls. Some are helped by seamen. Most just wait below. Hmm. So the, the poor people down below, they're starting to fill up with water and they know the boat's sinking. But the people up on the decks, they don't see the sinking yet, so they have no idea. And you know, there's already not enough lifeboats and they were sending them down half full. And that's no good. In the radio room, the operator calls for help. Other ships answer, but they are many, many miles away. One ship is not far away. Its name is the Californian. This ship is only 10 miles from the Titanic. 
It could reach the sinking ship in minutes and save everyone. The Titanic's operator calls again and again, but the Californian does not answer. It is late at night and the ship's radio is turned off. No one on board hears the calls for help. The Titanic sig tries to signal the Californian. It sets off rockets that look like fireworks. Sailors on the Californian see the rockets, but they do not understand that the Titanic is in trouble, so they do not come. They're trying to tell them, help us, we need your boat. But they just think they're lighting off fireworks. On the Titanic, the band is playing. The music is cheerful, but people are afraid now. The deck is slanting under their feet. The ship tilts more and more. The lower decks are underwater. Two lifeboats are left, but the sailors cannot get them loose. Hundreds and hundreds of people are still on board. And by now they know the end is near. An old couple holds hands. The wire will not leave or the wire. The wife will not leave her husband. One man puts on his best clothes. I will die like a gentleman, he says. Oh no, they know they're gonna die. There's two boats left and they can't get to them. They're scared now. No more music and happy times. Some people jump into the icy water. A few are lucky. They reach a lifeboat. The people in the lifeboats row away from the Titanic. Everyone is staring at the beautiful ship. Its lights are sparkling. The, li the lively music drifts across the water. See, it's going down. People are jumping, trying to swim to a lifeboat. But remember, the water is ice cold. This is really, really cold water. You can't be in it for long. Then the music changes. The band plays a hymn. One end of the huge ship slides slowly into the ocean. The music stops. There is a great roaring noise. A million sparks fill the air. The other end of the ship swings straight up. For a moment, the Titanic stays pointed at the stars. Then it disappears under the black water. So it bobs up and down like this for a minute and then it sinks forever taking all those people with it it's so sad this really happened titanic is real three never again chapter three sorry it is 2 20 a.m on april 15th the titanic is gone the people and the lifeboats stare into the night the sky is full of shooting stars but it is dark and it is bitter bitter cold most of the lifeboats have drifted away from each other. People just wait, and they try to get warm. Some have fur coats, others are wearing bathrobes and slippers. One man is in nothing but his underwear. Coldest of all are the ones who jumped from the ship and swam to a boat. Their hair and clothes are frosted with ice. So now they're stuck in the cold, the ones that did survive, freezing, just waiting for help to come. One lifeboat is upside down. About 30 men are standing on it. They lean this way and that way to keep the boat from sinking. Icy waves splash against their legs. One lifeboat goes back to try and help. They save one man. He is floating on a wooden door. They do not find many others. No one can last long in the freezing water. Well, here they are on an upside down boat trying to stay afloat trying to help people and there's one person that lived floating on a door but the water is so cold that it freezes you so all the ones that weren't in a boat and they just jumped they didn't make it either hours pass the sky grows lighter it seems as if help will never come then suddenly a light flashes and another it is the ship the car car carpathia it has come from 58 miles away. Everyone waves and cheers. They make torches. They burn paper, handkerchiefs, anything. They want to make the ship see them. The sun begins to rise. There are icebergs all around. The rescue ship almost hits one, but it turns just in time. The ship keeps heading towards the lifeboats. Help has finally come. So all the people on the lifeboats 
are finally being rescued after being in the cold all night long. I'm sure they were crying and very happy. All eyes are on the rescue ship. Boat by boat, the people are taken aboard. The sea is rough and it takes many hours, but at last everyone is safe. Soon the news flashes all around the world. The unsinkable Titanic has sunk. More than 2,200 people set out. Only 705 are rescued. So that's a lot. That's over a thousand people that died that day. How? Why? No one can understand. When the rescue ship reaches New York, 40,000 people are waiting. The Titanic survivors tell their stories. The world learns the truth. The safest ship was not safe at all. It was too late for the Titanic, but it was not too late for other ships. New safety laws were passed. Many changes were made. Today, every ship must have enough lifeboats for every single passenger. See, I told you. And every ship has lifeboat drills so people know what to do if there is an accident. So a lot, although a lot of people died, we learned a lot. Like we need to make sure we have enough boats and we need to know, make sure they know what to do so that they're not just standing around playing music and wasting time. Ship radios can never be turned off. Every call for help is heard. And now there is a special ice patrol. Patrol airlines keep track of dangerous icebergs and they warn ships. Never again can an iceberg take a ship by surprise. The Titanic was a terrible loss, but the world learned from it. Chapter 4. Found at Last Years went by. The Titanic lay many miles down in black, icy cold water. No divers could go down in such deep water, and no one can even find the ship. The map below shows you roughly where the Titanic sank. So there's England and Ireland. <laughs> and there's the Titanic. So they were almost, almost to their, their objective. Well, kind of. This is Canada. So they were almost really close to Canada. Some people thought the Titanic had been crushed. They said it was probably in a million pieces. Yet, treasure hunters kept on dreaming of the wonderful ship. They were sure there was gold on board and diamonds and pearls. A man named Robert Ballard dreamed of the Titanic too. Robert was a scientist. He studied the oceans. Robert worked in a famous laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. He didn't care about treasure. He just wanted to find the ship. He thought about it for years. Robert had a special invention. It was a kind of an underwater robot. Its name was Argo. Argo could dive down very, very deep. It had lights and a video camera. It could swim along the ocean floor. It could take underwater video pictures and it could send them to TV screens on a ship. So there's Argo. It's like a little water submarine. <laughs> Robert read all about the Titanic. He looked at maps and photos. Finally, he was ready. He thought he knew where the mystery ship was waiting. In the summer of 1985, Robert sailed north to Newfoundland. He went with a team of scientists. He took Argo with them. Robert sent Argo hunting. He didn't even have to get his feet wet, but he had to do a lot of watching. For days it was the same. He saw sand and more sand. And then at last, something different flashed on the screen. Was it a ship? Yes, it was a huge ship. The other scientists began to cheer. They had done it. They had found the Titanic. There he is working hard. Where could this Titanic be? And he actually found it with Argo. Robert gets could not believe his eyes. It was like seeing a ghost. There was the Titanic, sitting on the ocean floor. It had broken apart, but Robert could see how beautiful it still was. There was the Titanic. There's one piece laying perfectly flat. It's 
still down there. Over the days, Robert saw more and more of the ship. He saw the crow's nest where the lookout first spotted the iceberg. A beautiful glass window lay in the sand. The ship's giant anchors were still there. Bottles of wine were scattered about and suitcases. It was amazing and it was so sad. So many people had set out on the voyage. So few had returned. Finally, Robert sailed home. He did not tell anyone where he found the Titanic. He hoped the ship would stay just as it was. He did not want treasure, treasure hunters to come and loot it. Robert wanted to go back to the Titanic, and a year later he did. He landed a small submarine right on the deck of the Titanic. He set a robot inside the ship. There he is. There's all the suitcases, all the stuff laying in the sand. There's a submarine landing right on the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean. Robert did not take anything, but he did leave something behind. It was a message. He left it for anyone else who might find the Titanic. It asked that the great ship be left in peace. All over the world, people were thrilled by Robert's work. To some, it was very special. They had sailed on the Titanic. They had been small children then, and now they were very old. But they had never forgotten the unsinkable Titanic. The world would never forget. The end. It's coming up close. So let's see, what was the date? April... April 15th. Just check. April 14th is when it started to go down and April 15th is when it sank. So that the date anniversary of the Titanic is coming up very soon. So I wanted to make sure you learned about it ahead of time. So on April 14th and 15th, make sure you think about the Titanic and you send up a little prayer for all those lost souls because a lot of people died that day. Unfortunately, a lot of people die before we learn things that improve our future. Like we have to have enough lifeboats, we have to have drills so we know how to do it if the ship were to sink. Nobody can turn their radios off so everyone can always hear for help. And they have planes that watch all the icebergs so they can tell all the ships. So although it was very sad, we learned a lot and we grew from it and improved. I hope you like this story. I'll see you all next time, kids.